When a diver removed a hook from an injured shark, it was the beginning of an unlikely relationship. And when the two friends were forcibly separated, they had to wait one long year to find out whether their unbelievable friendship would survive a scary ordeal. Jim Anarethy was fast becoming an accomplished filmmaker and photographer. For as long as he could remember, he had been fascinated by the ocean. Its dark, mysterious vastness had drawn him in since he was young and pushed him to buy the best waterproof equipment on the market. But despite all his cameras, his greatest encounter would prove impossible to capture in a single image. And it would bring him face to face with the animal he feared most. It all began off the coast of the Bahamas one afternoon, near an area called Tiger Beach. Jim was scouting for locations to film an upcoming project. With the salty sea air spraying in his face, he and his team made their way along the shore, looking for signs of rich marine life. That's when Jim spotted something and signaled for the driver to slow the boat down. The engine cut off and their rudder swerved as one of his crew members directed them towards where Jim was pointing. Before the small boat had even stopped, the filmmaker was zipping up his wetsuit and attaching his diving equipment. By the time the boat came to a stop, rocking gently atop the water from side to side, Jim was plunging backwards into the water. As the bubbles dissipated and the surroundings came into focus, he was astonished by the amount of sea life. There were hundreds, maybe even thousands of fish clumped together, swimming in schools. Some had bright yellow tails, others were a vibrant blue, as though they had been dipped into paint. But Jim wouldn't have too much time to enjoy himself. Just minutes after he arrived, pushing his legs against the sandy ground beneath him, a huge, dark shadow approached from up ahead. Jim knew immediately that it was a shark. It was in unusually shallow water, and it was coming right towards him. Jim had been traumatized by a near shark attack a few years back. He had been followed for almost a minute by a threatening predator and only narrowly escaped into the boat. That's why he froze with terror, simply floated around, and desperately wondered what to do. Being an experienced diver, he knew that at this point he would be better off trying not to startle it. But he would need to compose himself and stay calm. The shark circled him, imposing its huge figure on the helpless human. As the predator passed at Jim's shoulder height, he noticed something sticking out of its mouth. It was a sharp metal hook that had punctured its way through the top of the shark's mouth and through the other side. The poor thing had been injured by fishermen, but had miraculously managed to escape from capture. Jim knew exactly where this hook had come from. There was a big fishing vessel just a few miles away that had been illegally catching sharks, taking him back to Asia where they were in high demand. Jim's fear was replaced by a sense of responsibility. He wanted to help. Stretching his arms out in a gesture of friendliness, he wondered if the shark would understand that he was trying to be as little threatening as possible. And sure enough, the shark slowly drifted closer, staying close to the ocean floor and pointing its head directly at Jim, who was able to get to work. He gently tugged the metal hook with his gloved hands, slowly wiggling it backwards and forwards to avoid causing too much pain. The shark didn't flinch once. It took several minutes to fully remove the hook, but once it was done though, Jim realized that he had made a new friend. Grazing up beside him affectionately, the shark refused to leave its savior. And by this point, Jim's diving mate Nick had descended into the water too and was filming the entire interaction. The photographer spent the whole afternoon with this shark, playing and swimming, taking in a moment he thought would be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. But. He was wrong. After packing up their equipment and heading back to the shore, Jim and his team couldn't stop talking about what they had witnessed. Deciding to go back the next day, Jim was even more shocked to find the same shark seemingly waiting for him. And so began a long friendship. He named the shark Emma after his eldest daughter because it was the most affectionate and loving shark he had ever come across. If that wasn't enough, Emma brought her friends to meet Jim and over the coming months came to recognize the sound of his boat from miles away. He had overcome his fear of sharks, but now he was filled with a new purpose, one that would culminate in the most stressful year of his life.
Against the advice of his colleagues, Jim decided to go after the fishing boat. If the authorities weren't going to enforce the law, then somebody else had to. Jim contacted Sea Shepherd, a marine activist organization with experience in intercepting illegal vessels for advice. They told him how he could circle the ship and cut their fishing lines, cutting off their main source of food and sabotaging their mission without repercussions. Daringly, Jim went out alone one morning, with only one colleague brave enough to accompany him. In a small dinghy, he zipped around the giant boat and sliced the nets before returning back aboard the research vessel, where his partner was waiting for him. Then, they confronted the boat over the radio, warning the ship to stop their fishing activities immediately. In a crackle of distortion came back a single word, no. The captain of the vessel wasn't intimidated by Jim and claimed to have an agreement with the local government. This wasn't true and Jim knew it. And so together with his partner, they spent the next few days cutting any fishing nets the crew threw out. The captain screamed at them over the radio and threatened to ram their small boat. But eventually, they were scared off, and with a horn sounding out through the air, the huge vessel changed course and headed east. Jim had succeeded, and he returned to the spot where Emma frequented the following day, happy to see her waiting for him. This relationship only grew over the years. Incredibly, for the next two decades, whenever Jim would return, Emma would greet him with uncontrollable affection. One day, in 2020 though, Jim saw something he hoped to never see again. A huge wall of rusted white and blue with block letters reading Chang Tai 801 approaching the waters. This was exactly the same ship he had chased off years earlier. Radio communication confirmed that it was a different captain, but they were on the same mission, to catch sharks. Jim decided to leave it for the following day when he could get a crew ready. But tomorrow never came. All boats were called into the docks and operations halted. Arriving at the dock office, Jim asked what was going on. The coronavirus pandemic had started and there was a global shutdown for any non-essential services. And a single aircraft was waiting to repatriate Americans back to the States. Jim was ushered there so quickly that he only remembered the Chinese fishing ship when he was on the plane. The vessel was still stationed nearby the shore and refusing to move. He shuddered to think about what this meant for Emma, and prayed that whenever he made it back, she would still be there. Twelve agonizing months later, Jim was finally free to return. Flying overhead, far above the crystal blue waters, he could see that there was no fishing boat to be seen. But that didn't mean much. Emma may have been picked up months ago, perhaps just after he left a year earlier. Following the procedure that he had done hundreds of times now, Jim ventured out to the spot where he and Emma usually met, dropping back into the water and scouting the area. But there was no sign of any shark. He began running scenarios in his head, trying to convince himself that Emma may have migrated safely. But he couldn't shake a knot in his stomach that dreaded the worst. However, just as he was about to signal for the crew to move on to the next location, Emma emerged from behind him with a swirl, snaking her way around Jim's body. Seeing Emma's face was like a light at the end of the tunnel. Her presence motivated Jim to continue his preservation work and was determined to use his footage of Emma to help prove to the world that sharks were affectionate, not dangerous creatures. What an incredible story! How would you react if a shark approached you asking for help? And would you be brave enough to go against a big fishing vessel on your own? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.